A few months ago, I got a hold of a vacuum chamber with a pump similar to this one. So I'm going to test combustion and thrust in a vacuum. Here's my setup. It has a steel tub. I placed a candle inside to visualize the removal of oxygen. I put a layer of aluminum foil around the inside to protect from heat and scorch and held that up with pairs of magnets. I put a small shield of foil to disperse the candle heat from actually being directly aimed at the acrylic lid. I attached a rocket to an old fidget spinner, screwed it to a disc of wood, and attached it to a 2 kilogram diving weight. The igniters I'm using are simple hobby grade electrical charges that combust to ignite the rocket. So I attach that to the rocket. A thick acrylic lid with a silicone lining sits on top with the valves and the pressure gauge. To get electricity to the igniters, I have to create a two-wire connection or circuit from outside of the chamber to inside the chamber. I use that copper plumbing as a conduit for one wire through the chamber lid into the chamber. I use magnets and the steel tub as a conduit for the other wire to also make it into the chamber. And once the pressure has been reduced, I connect the wires to a battery, which ignites the igniter. Oh, and you will also see a familiar wire holding assembly that I use to hold the wires back from the spinner. First, let's get something out of the way. I call this the burnout test. In my setup, you'll notice that I have a candle. This candle serves two purposes. First, it is a visual indicator that due to the reduction of atmosphere in the chamber, I wanted a functioning flame to show if combustion due to naturally present oxygen was possible, as well as to burn off any that might still be believed to be in the chamber. And second, by that same principle, showing that atmosphere was actually in fact being removed from the chamber. The burnout test was done because, due to the presence of the flame in the chamber, under natural conditions, the flame will eventually burn out all the oxygen in the chamber all by itself. But I wanted to demonstrate at what rate this would occur naturally versus when the air is pumped out of the chamber. In short, I just wanted to show that there was no combustible air in the chamber, no remaining gases to push off of, and that the cause was the removal of the gases due to the vacuum pump. So I placed a lit candle inside of the chamber, closed all the valves, weighted down the lid to keep a seal, and timed how long it took for the candle to burn out all the oxygen in the chamber and then go out on its own. The burnout test concluded that it took almost exactly 10 minutes to burn all the oxygen out of the stated 5 gallon chamber. However, during the vacuum tests, the candle was consistently out within one minute of the pump being turned on, with a small variance of a second or two depending on how long the lit candle was in the chamber with the lid closed, before starting the pump, which kind of gave the candle a head start. So in this 10 minute versus one minute comparison, the conclusion was clear that in all the tests performed, the short life of the candle was primarily caused by the pumping out of atmosphere from the chamber. So moving on, let's get to the tests. The igniters and the fuses I used burn just fine. However, they're built for standard in-air use. When the igniter goes off, the charge pops and some of the material stays lit as it contacts the rocket propellant. But in a vacuum chamber, available oxygen and pressure is basically gone. So the amount of sustained heat and sparks produced is far less, causing a functional igniter to fail in lighting the stubborn propellant. Now if you've seen other videos like this, I ran into the same problems that everyone else did. Namely, problems with the ignition of the rocket propellant itself using low-powered, off-the-shelf igniters. 
Two of the videos discussing this issue, while staying with the off-the-shelf igniters, actually encapsulated the whole or just the ignition end of the rocket, trapping a small amount of air to burn during the ignition process. And once the propellant was going, the cap would be compromised and expelled by the exhaust. And this worked just fine for them. I tried this as well, but mine failed. But only later I found out this was actually due to a short in the wiring that I was not aware of. But actually I'm happy it failed, because that led me to explore other options. After watching my igniters pop and inspecting the after effects, one thing was very clear. There was so much igniter material trying to start a very small surface of the propellant, even under normal conditions. And in the chamber, it was obvious that there was only a small chance of that function with the reduction of the ignition material due to the vacuum. So I decided that more propellant surface was needed for a successful ignition. And my solution was to bore out the ignition space to allow the whole igniter to be in contact with the propellant and not just trying to hit a small bullseye with a few sparks. And well, this was the result. Three, two, one. Yes! Yes! Rockets work in a vacuum. Y'all have a night. Oh my god. Oh, and three little simple afterthoughts for my science denying truther friends. I filmed all of this at just under a thousand foot or 300 meters of altitude above sea level. And the weather was cold. This has an effect on what is considered to be a vacuum in the chamber. This video obviously showed that combustion in a vacuum chamber is more than possible even when there's not enough oxygen present to sustain even a simple candle. The pressure increase during thrust went from 24 inches of mercury and peaked at about 18 inches of mercury due to heat. But once it cooled, it returned back down to about 22 inches of mercury which all in all makes only about two PSI difference in the expelled gases from the back of the rocket. Oh my God.